Thursday the 10th of October 1839. At a little after half past seven, I went to the top of the staircase and received my dear cousins, Ernest and Albert, whom I found grown and changed and embellished. It was with some emotion that I beheld Albert, who is beautiful. I embraced them both and took them to Mama. It's fascinating when you read it because she wrote two and a half thousand words a day all her life. She was given the journal from her mother when she was 13 and she did that every single day. So you have an entire history of her, of her family and her life, which is extraordinary. So what did you learn about her that you didn't know before? Oh my God, the fact that she's a tease, the fact that when she was young, you know, she was all that sort of, just like any other young girl and fancying all these men and just wanting all that, you know, the fun, the joy, and, but also that she had to hide all that depression and the, the grief, that as well, because was, that was all written down because it was like a, th a therapy session for her, just writing the diaries. Albert really is quite charming. So excessively handsome, such beautiful blue eyes and exquisite nose, such a pretty mouth with delicate moustaches and slight but very slight whiskers, broad shoulders and a fine waist. I said to Lord M that I'd made up my mind about marrying dearest Albert. He said, you'll be much more comfortable. You find her normality and you see how she grows from being a normal child really into how she has that layer of being queen but also the vulnerability of being a, a normal human being. Hormones blazing uh, Victoria for sure yeah it's that period where she's you know discovering boys and, and men and, and what she thinks and how she is perceived I think um, it's very fun to play because she's um, she's falling in love you know for the first time and she's got these crushes you know she has a crush on any man that kind of comes into her life, unfortunately, because she's, um, she's been very sheltered. The Queen will not be dictated to or made to alter what she has found to answer for her comfort. The Queen must say that she does feel very bitterly the want of feeling of those who ask the Queen to open Parliament. That the public wish to see her, she fully understands. But why this wish should be of so unfeeling and unreasonable a nature as to long to witness the spectacle of a poor, broken-hearted widow, nervous and shrinking, dragged in deep mourning, in state, as a show, to be gazed at without delicacy or feeling is a thing she cannot understand. She mirrors the, the royal family of today, how she certainly mirrored Elizabeth II. Because, I mean, I think Elizabeth II sort of idolised and looked on Victoria as, you know, as how to do the job, really. And it, it's so modern what she did and so modern what she wrote and it, it's not dissimilar to what's happening today and what happened all through the Crown really. When Prince Philip died and it, we were in Covid and the Queen had to sit in that chapel on her own, um, there's a scene in this where Victoria is sort of dragged back from Scotland to open Parliament and she has to sit in Parliament on her own and the poignancy of that it's like a mirror image. She does have to face a lot of very bleak, you know, things that we all do. You know, we all lose people we love and, and she has to do it in the public eye as well. Dark house by which once more I stand here in the long, unlovely street. Doors where my heart was used to beat so quickly, waiting for a hand, a hand that can be clasped no more. I think it's very important, it's integral to the whole piece, the heart of it. Um, the fact that she did the show for so long and can still remember it, and she has this voice that just draws you immediately. She can, she can portray vocally um, what's going on in her, which is just something that is a kind of animal instinct. It just makes you listen and tune in. And I, I think it's lovely that she's been part of this. Prue um, providing the voiceover, which we got given before we started, was lovely because she provides that kind of, because she used to do it originally, obviously 
as uh, by herself as a one woman show. So she, her voice kind of changes on the recording. So she goes from being this, you know, very kind of bubbly to this really aging kind of voice. So that provided me with a really lovely blueprint um, in terms of how Sarah and I might play the same person. She will do it this time as she promises she owns, she resents the unfeelingness of those who have clamoured for it. <laughs>